So now that you've learned how to create a thread, now that you've learned a couple of different ways of basically being able to give code to a thread to do its, to do its processing, let's talk about different ways you can pass parameters to a thread. And we'll see that uh, there's a real important need for this because the run method on both the thread class as well as on the runnable interface takes no parameters. So at first you might be like, well, how the heck do I pass parameters to a thread if, if I can't pass any parameters to run? Why isn't there a, a var args parameter, for example? Well, the answer of course is that there's better ways to do it. And the designers of Java knew that, so they didn't bother trying to make run take parameters. But you have to know how to do this. And it's, it's something that requires knowing idioms and patterns in how you program Java and Java threads. So there's two general ways of passing parameters to threads. There's probably other ways to do it too, but these are the two most common ways of doing it. One is to pass parameters to a class constructor. So if we were to go take a look at the, the GCD runnable.java file, which we'll probably take a look at later when we go back and look at the example in more detail, you'll see that there's a class called GCD runnable, which for various reasons extends the random class and implements the runnable interface. And within this particular uh, class, we're going to define a field, and that field is going to be called M activity, and it's of type main activity. Remember, main activity was the, the thing that we used to interact with the user in Android. And so what we're going to do here is define some fields that can be stored parameters that we need to pass to a running thread. And then the easy way to do this, of course, as you can see here, as you probably already guessed, is we simply have a constructor for GCD runnable that takes one or more parameters. In this case, it takes one parameter because we have one field we want to pass to the thread. And it stashes that field away in the body of the constructor. So we have a parameter, we can pass in the activity, that activity gets stored in the field. And it's a final field. And that has certain properties with respect to concurrency, which we won't go into now, but just remember that. Here then is the run hook method for GCD runnable. And you can see what it uses this field for is it uses this field to print information. And uh, in this particular case, we define a helper method on our main activity class called printlin, which should look familiar to you. And what it does is it basically prints the debugging information or the diagnostic information on the console of the Android app. So in this case, it basically writes it to a text window. So you can see here, it goes ahead and prints the, the diagnostic information when we enter the run method plus a string that says what the thread ID is and so on and so forth. So that's how we communicate from the thread that's running in the background to the activity that's running in the foreground in a different thread and get that to display the results to the user. And we'll talk later when we talk more about Android, how that actually works under the hood. If you're really curious, you can go look at the code and see what it does. It's very simple. Here's the, here's the main activity itself. This is the, the run runnable method, which is connected to the button that we would push if we want to run the runnable implementation of the GCD example. And you can see what it does when, when run runnable is called, and it's called when the button is pushed by the user. It goes ahead and makes a new instance of GCD runnable passing in this. And this, of course, is the object of the main activity. It's the name of the main activity, which, of course, is of type main activity. And if you take a look up here, you can see that that's what's passed in to the GCD runnable, a main activity object. And for those of you who are still puzzled about some of the things in assignment number 1A, this is giving you a gigantic hint as to uh, how to pass information in certain ways. So passing, we use this to pass a parameter, in this case, the main activity to the runnable, which is then going to be used to run in the background uh, in a thread where the computations are done, but we display the results back in the user interface thread that's under control uh, in the main activity. There's another way to do this as well. So if you don't want to pass the various uh, parameters to the constructor, you can also have parameters passed to various setter methods. And so let's take a look at the setter approach. So in this case, we're going to use the other alternative implementation, which is the one where GCD thread extends thread. And what it's going to do is it's going to have a field called main activity or of type main activity called M activity. It's going to have another field called M random of type random. 
and we're going to show how we can set these various fields. And just for kicks, just to show off yet another technique that you should be familiar with, we're going to have a couple of setter methods. We have one called set activity that takes an activity, stores it in the field, and then returns this. So it comes back as a GCD thread. And then we have another method called set random, which takes a random and stores that in the field and returns this. So both of these methods return this. In other words, they're returning GCD threads. And we'll see why we do that in a second. We do this in order to be able to support so-called fluent interfaces. So you should take a look at the link below, it's something called the fluent interface pattern, which I think was first documented by Martin Fowler, although I'm sure it was done well before he came along. And it enables the chaining of method calls. So let's take a look at how this would work. So here's the run hook method. This is what GCD thread does. You can see it uses M activity in order to print information when something is going to, to be entered into the run method. You can see that we use M random to generate the next random integer for number one and number two, so we can compute the GCD and so on. And then here is the main activities run thread method. And this of course is the method that gets called back, the hook method that gets called back when you click the run thread button on the Android GUI that we saw earlier. And what this does is it makes a new GCD thread and then it says set activity this because it's the main activity we're trying to set. And then it says set random, new random. And notice how we are chaining together the calls to set activity and set random so we can put them together in a so-called fluent interface in order to provide whatever parameters we need to the GCD thread object. So when it starts running, those fields have been initialized. This is a very, very common programming idiom in Java, JavaScript, C++, you name it. Lots of, lots of languages do this nowadays. So I'm showing you how to pass parameters to threads, but I'm also giving you some tips on common ways of programming so-called fluent interfaces. So that's a quick overview of how to pass parameters to a thread. It's, it's good to know how to do this because as you can tell, there is no parameters. There are no parameters that are passed to the run hook method of runnable or thread. So instead you have to pass the parameters through other means, which we've talked about here.